today we are going to be taking a look at my favourite Formula 1 mystery and one that is remembered by many F1 fans but might be totally new to newer fans of the sport. F1 pre-season testing is a vital time for drivers and teams, with drivers getting familiar with their cars to provide feedback to their mechanics and engineers, but also for the team themselves to gather as much data as possible before the opening race of the season. This particular story always really stood out to me. The bizarre nature of it with mentions of electrocution and memory loss really captivated me and got me thinking what actually happened. So let's get into what happened on that day of testing. It's 2015, Sebastian Vettel has joined Ferrari, Fernando Alonso is about to commence his first season with McLaren Honda and Pastor Maldonado is still in F1. On the final day of the first test in Barcelona, Fernando Alonso hit the wall at turn 3 at roughly 130 35 kilometers an hour, though other reports state that it was 150 kilometers an hour. The cause of the accident was unknown. Initially, McLaren made a statement saying that their findings indicated an unpredictable gusty wind at the time, and that there was no evidence indicating a mechanical failure. After the accident, Fernando was reportedly unconscious. A Spanish newspaper reported that when he woke up, he told doctors, My name is Fernando Alonso. I race carts. I want to be a Formula One driver, and that he could not initially remember anything after the year 1995. Though Fernando denies this and said that he remembered the accident, but that everything was more or less a normal concussion, as you can imagine, the bizarre reports first published by the media quickly had people talking. It's not the average Formula One incident. The idea of Alonso being possibly electrocuted and suffering from some sort of memory loss was concerning to many people. It quickly became the big story of 2015's pre-season. So why was this story so mysterious? Well, there are different recollections about what happened. On one side, you have McLaren, who blamed the accident on an unlucky gust of wind and no evidence of a mechanical failure. On the other side, you have the driver, Fernando Alonso, who who, at his return at the Malaysian Grand Prix, told the media it's clear that there was a problem in the car, and said that the crash was caused by lock steering, and further went on to say that even a hurricane would not move the car at that speed. Alonso's reasoning was the total opposite to McLaren's side of the story, which further led people to speculate about what really went on. There was speculation that Fernando may have blacked out at the wheel from an electric shock, or just simply fainting. A photographer at the track claimed that Fernando's head was bent to the side, before he went off, which would suggest that he was out of it while still on the racetrack. The FIA investigated the accident but did not release their findings. This was before pre-season testing was broadcast live. Therefore, all we had to rely on were eyewitness accounts and the story told by Fernando Alonso himself and the team, which was totally the opposite. No footage of the crash itself exists, though there is trackside footage after the incident, which only just adds to the mystery and interests of this case. Fernando also said that he wasn't unconscious when he made contact with the wall, but while in the ambulance or at the medical center. But this was due to the medication he was on, which he explained as normal. Ron Dennis denied any suggestion of electrocution. Though there are different theories about what may have taken place, the accident already gave us fans an insight into a driver-team relationship that was already not off to the greatest of starts. 2015 was Fernando's first year at McLaren Honda, what was meant to be a new beginning after leaving Formula 1 powerhouse Ferrari. As we have heard, Fernando and McLaren's explanations are almost completely the opposite. Fernando even suggested that the sensors on his car were too immature to detect a failure, which would have surely irritated a team who recently renamed itself to the McLaren Technology Group. Later on though, Ron Dennis would appear in an interview with Sky F1, saying that both sides were telling the truth, and if Fernando felt like there was something wrong with his steering, he would not disagree with him. Depending on who and what you believe, the accident still remains a mystery. McLaren never released any official telemetry, so was it a gust of wind? Did Fernando black out at the wheel and crash? How much of a factor was Fernando's concussion? Was there an issue with the steering like Fernando said? Either way, the conflicting accounts of what happened on that day at Turn 3 in Barcelona still raises eyebrows to this very day. Without any official findings released, many fans believe 
there is something we aren't being told, and until we know for certain, the speculation and conspiracy will continue. It's likely we will never get certain answers about this. It's a topic I have been asked to cover many times by you guys, so if you want my personal opinion, here it is. When Fernando went off the track and hit the wall, I am somewhat inclined to believe something occurred before that. With Fernando's story, he claimed steering lock, which is believable. The gusty wind theory is also possible, as a similar incident at Turn 3 happened with Carlos Sainz. Where I start to think deeper into this is the reports of Fernando suffering memory loss and a concussion. Without footage, it's harder to grasp how hard he hit the wall without seeing it for myself, and with Fernando denying that he thought he was in the year 1995, there is no concrete proof. With Alonso missing the following race in Melbourne, it's clear that there was some sort of concussion or head injury. Some suggest the angle in which Fernando hit the wall could have caused him to take most of the impact instead of the car itself. I can't say anything for certain because for me, it's one of the more difficult theories to break down. Still, with no official onboards, footage, telemetry or FIA report, this will remain a conspiracy. The team principal for McLaren, Eric Brulier, told me that it was precautionary that he was being taken to hospital. He is okay, he's conscious, and he is talking to the doctors. But when he was loaded into the air ambulance, he was on a stretcher at the time, and it was shielded from us all by some big white sheets to stop anyone uh, seeing the driver as he was loaded onto the helicopter. But he has gone to hospital for precautionary checks. We're being told he is talking and he is conscious, and the team themselves have said they will update us later on what happened.